Raspberry Pi 4 can now officially boot from USB. Finally, that means you can use SSD or HDD drives instead of SD cards. In this video, I will show you how you can do that step by step. And you don't even have to attach a monitor to your Raspberry. What's up, Kirill Payanskis here. SD cards can cause issues and are much slower than SSDs. Since I have my Raspberry Pi 4, my SD card got corrupted several times. So I have to remove the SD card, format it, install operating system again, and restore all of the configurations that I had. Doing this can be really frustrating. So I waited for the official Raspberry Pi 4 USB boot as a kit for its birthday. When I saw the news, I immediately bought a SSD drive and decided to give this a try. Just a quick warning here. At the time of shooting this video, the official boot loader supporting USB boot on a Raspberry Pi 4 is in beta state and not all SSD or HDD drives will be compatible for USB booting. I can confirm that this HP P600 solid state drive is working without any issues and I'll try to gather more models reported by the users as working and I'll put them in the video description. Now let's go! Go to raspberrypi.org and click on downloads. Download the Raspberry Pi imager for your operating system. In my case it's macOS. I already downloaded this and I install it already in order not to waste your time. In order to start it on macOS, press command plus spacebar. This will start the spotlight search and enter Raspberry and start the Raspberry Pi imager. Insert your SD card to your computer, go to the first option which is recommended option and it will install the Debian with Raspberry Pi desktop for you. Choose again your SD card and click on write. It asks me for my administrator password. Ok, this will download the Raspberry Pi OS image and it will burn it to your SD card. Don't worry, we will need the SD card only for a while, then we will remove it completely. When the Raspberry Pi imager finish, it will disconnect the SD card, so you have to unplug and plug your card again in order to, to see it, just like that. Here it is, boot. Inside this boot partition, you have to create a file named SSH. When you create an empty file called SSH inside the boot partition of your SD card, you will be able to connect to your Raspberry Pi over the network without even attaching a monitor to it. And I will show you how to do it. The easier way to do this is to copy, for example, this file and to paste it again and to rename it. Delete everything inside and rename the file to SSH. In that way, I can access my Raspberry Pi remotely without using a monitor connected to the Raspberry. Log in to your router and find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Copy this address. Open a terminal and enter SSH P at the IP address. The default password is Raspberry. Then execute the following command to update your Raspberry. sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. You have to wait for the process to finish, but I'll skip that in order not to waste your time. APT upgrade is now complete, but now it's time to start another update. This time it's RP update. Just execute the following command and wait for it to finish. Do not use RP update as part of the regular update process. After that, reboot your Raspberry Pi. 
we will now install a package that will allow us to update our Raspberry Pi bootloader. Log in again to your Raspberry Pi and execute sudo apt install rpi-ee prom. This is a tool that we need in order to install the needed bootloader. Press enter. It will be probably already installed, but you should try it nevertheless. Then we have to edit one file, which is located in etc folder. Default. The only thing that we have to change here is the word critical, and we have to replace it with beta. Because of the time of the shooting of this video, this bootloader is still in beta state. Run this command to tell the Raspberry Pi to use beta firmware releases. We need this because this is where the new bootloader lives. You can use this command, this one-liner, to do the same. You can get it from the video description. Now it's time to actually update our bootloader with the following command. Use the latest firmware available here. In my case it's from 3rd of June, just don't forget to use the latest date that you see in this folder. It asks you to reboot to apply the update. Before you reboot again your device, you can check the current bootloader by executing this command. As you can see it's from April 16. Log in again to your Raspberry Pi. You can execute the following command to check that bootloader is updated to the chosen version in the previous step. In my case it's June the 3rd. The following command will show you if the correct boot order is selected. In our case, if there is no SD card, it will search for a USB drive. This is the last row boot order equals 0F41. If you see such values, you can continue forward. We need to burn the image of the Raspberry Pi operating system one more time, but this time on the SSD. Start again the Raspberry Pi imager, choose the recommended option here, Raspberry Pi OS. This time plug your USB drive, in my case is SSD drive, and choose it as a destination. Enter your admin password here and write the image on it. And don't forget to create again an empty SSH file in the boot partition to activate the remote SSH login to your Raspberry. You can skip this step if you have a monitor, keyboard and a mouse attached to your Raspberry Pi. If you don't have monitor attached, don't forget to create an empty SSH file in the boot partition of the drive. Burning the Raspberry Pi OS on the SSD drive is now ready and I will mount the drive to copy some files from the SD card. Let's do it, it's easy. Log in again to your Raspberry Pi and create the following folder using the mkdir command. Then attach your USB drive, in my case it's under def sda1 and use mount command to mount the disk in the newly created folder. Use the following two commands cp to copy all elf files and all dot files in the USB drive. You can double check that the files are available in the destination folder by using the ls command. Then shut down your Raspberry Pi, remove the SD card and leave only the USB drive. Now is the time where you can throw away your SD card. I actually don't recommend throw anything, especially your SD card. Just remove it from your Raspberry Pi 4 and use it for something else. But if you feel like you want to throw something after all, why don't you try throwing mouse click against the like button of this video? I would truly appreciate that. Thank you. 
in my case is SSD drive HP P600 model. I didn't have enough time to check how you can easily upgrade when there is a newer firmware or even official not better release without having to go through the same procedure with the SD card again. If you know, let me know in the comments section below. All the credits in the video description and in my website will go to you. If everything is okay, your Raspberry Pi will boot up with the USB drive without any issues and you can log in again using the SSH. Let's enable the VNC server to allow connecting to the graphical interface of the Raspberry Pi 4. Execute sudo raspi config. Choose interfacing options. Then VNC and enable this if it's disabled. Click yes. Then finish and you can try to connect to your Raspberry Pi with your username and your password using a VNC client. One of the popular one is VNC Viewer. You can download it for free, just Google for it. If you see the following error and you cannot connect to the VNC server of your Raspberry Pi, I will show you a quick fix for that. I will show you a quick fix if you face a similar error and you cannot connect with VNC client. Again, sudo raspi config, choose advanced options and then resolution. Enter the resolution suitable for you and reboot your device. After that you can open your VNC client, in my case it's VNC viewer and connect to your Raspberry Pi. This time everything should work as it should be. And you will have a fully functional Raspberry Pi with SSD, which can be used as a desktop computer for example. And it will be more reliable and more faster than a Raspberry Pi with an SD card. Any sort of engagement on this channel does really help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. So you make sure that you hit the subscribe, like and bell buttons if you enjoyed this video. Also, feel free to add me on Twitter by searching for this username. I'm trying to post there frequently. You can also find me on my Discord server as well. I really hope that you find this information useful and you now know how to boot your Raspberry Pi 4 from USB drive like this SSD and you remove your SD card forever. Thank you for watching, stay safe and see you next time.